Okay, this is a follow on to our um, work um, on the last uh, portion of the lesson about the production quantity model. And again, the production quantity model, the only thing that's changed about this is that we've changed and we're um, replenishment occurs at a constant rate concurrently with demand or consumption. And so we had our, what I'll call our sawtooth model, which we had increasing uh, quantities on hand and then it decreased as we consumed and then it increased during a production and then decreased. And instead of actually uh, sawtooth, uh, this would be our shark's tooth model because these look, look these uh, repeating cycles look like shark's teeth and that's 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 um, but everything else remains the same as with the economic order quantity except again for the fact that we are in the business of producing and selling those same items okay. again uh, there's no instantaneous replenishment and we're in the situation where we're simultaneously manufacturing and consuming and our inventory builds up gradually. So let's look um, at how we derived the model and we came up with this formula for uh, determining the optimal order quantity, which is Q star. So Q star is the optimal order quantity and it's determined by this formula. Right, so let's look at a problem and this is the Ambrosia Bakery problem on page 565 of your textbook. And uh, I'll read it, and we've got five questions uh, to answer. Number one, here we go. The Ambrosia Bakery makes cakes for freezing and subsequent sale. The bakery operates five days a week, 52 weeks a year, and it can produce cakes at the rate of 116 cakes per day. The bakery sets up the cake production operation and produces until a predetermined number, parentheses Q, has been produced. When not producing cakes, the bakery uses its personnel and facilities for producing other bakery items. The setup cost for a production run of cakes, cakes is $700. The cost of holding frozen cakes in storage is $9 per cake per year. And the annual demand for frozen cakes is 600, six, excuse me, 6,000 cakes. First of all, determine the following. The optimal production run quantity. Okay, and so first of all, we want to find Q star. We want to find Q star, and we know that Q star, we know by our formula, it's going to be the square root of 2 times our demand times our cost of ordering, C sub O, divided by the quantity of 1 minus D over P times our carrying cost. So first out, we need to determine all of these values. And so we should, and, and even before that, how do we know that we're in a production quantity situation? And there's the one key word right in the first sentence. It says the Ambrosia Bakery makes cakes for freezing and subsequent sales. So they're making and selling. That's the key to know that we're in that production quantity. We know from the problem statement that our annual demand is um, 6,000 cakes. We know the cost of ordering is, the, is that setup cost is $700. And the care, we know the carrying cost is $9 per cake per year. And we know that we can produce 116 cakes per year. 
Now, what we don't know yet is the daily demand. And the daily demand is going to be 6,000 divided by the number of operating days. And in this case, the bakery we know is taught, we're told, is operates five days a week for all 52 weeks uh, in the year. So this is our daily demand. And of course, this then is going to be 6,000. And doing the, doing the arithmetic, uh, this is 260 days. And so this daily demand um, turns out to be 23.1 cakes uh, per day. And you'll notice, of course, that P is greater than D. Now, I like to, to compute this because it's, an, it's a term that you're going to use over and over again, and it's nice to have handy. I like to go ahead, personally, you don't have to, but I like to go ahead and compute 1 minus D over P because that's a term that you're going to use a lot. And in this case, 1 minus D over P is 1 minus 23.1 over 116. And this is going to be, of course, 1 minus 0 0.2. do the arithmetic, which is going to be 0 0.8. So 80% of the cakes that we make go onto the shelf. So 1 minus D over P. So now we have all the terms that we need. And we're just going to substitute those in. So again, this is going to be the square root of 2 times 6,000. The ordering cost is 700. The denominator is, again, 1 minus D over P, 0 0.8 times our carrying cost, which is $9. And when you do the arithmetic, this comes out to be 1,007. Uh, 1,079 cakes. That's our order quantity. And this is Q star optimal. Not only is it the order quantity, it's the optimal. It leads to the minimum uh, total annual inventory cost. The next question is to determine the minimum total annual inventory cost. And if we, if we remember the total annual inventory cost, it's that optimal order quantity, Q star, times 1 minus D over P, 1 minus D over P, divided by 2, times our carrying cost, plus D divided by Q times our ordering cost, number of orders. D, D divided by Q, you'll remember, again, is the number of orders in the year. And again, we're just going to, we're going to go and we'll substitute in and we knew that our Q star was 1,079, 1 minus D over P. And again, this is why I like to keep that term handy, 0.8 over 2 times our, our carrying cost is $9 plus 6,000. And again, this is the Q star value. 
6,000 divided by 1,079 times our ordering cost, which is 700. Oops, sorry. And again, this then is going to be, we do the arithmetic that turns out to be 7,700. And seventy six dollars. Part C is optimal number of orders per year. And we've already talked about that. The optimal number of orders per year is the our annual demand divided by the optimal order quantity T divided by Q star. And again, that's going to be 6,000 divided by Q star 1,079. It's going to be a little bit less than six when it turns out to be there's five point five six orders the next thing that we wanted to determine is the optimal uh, optimal time between orders this is an interesting question how are we going to count the time between orders and remember that that that's related to this cycle time And how many cycles do we have in this problem? We've got one, two, three, four, five, and, and 0.56 cycles in this, in this year. This is the year. And so the question then is, every time that we reach zero, we're, we'll have a, have a new order. So how many times do we have a new order? Well, and how many days? Remember, there's 260 days. And there's 5.56 orders each day. So the optimal time between orders for our cycle time is going to be the number of days number of operating days divided by the number of this number of orders and that's going to be our 260 days divided by our 5.56 orders. And that turns out to, to be 46 and two thirds days. So just under 50 days for each order. Two questions that are um, that are not answered that I want to that I want to ask you though is what's the maximum number of cakes on hand? How many cakes have to be stored? So we need to know what's how many how much refrigeration do we need. We need to know Q max. And again, as you remember, this is going to be Q Q star times one minus D over P. And the last question, this is not in the textbook, but is what's our production period, TCP? And again, that production period is going to be Q star divided by P. So now we can just substitute in and solve for these. This is 1,079 
times 0 0.8. Again, that's why I like to keep that figure handy. That turns out to be 865 cakes. That's how many have to be stored and frozen. And what's our production period? How long does it take to produce each order? It's Q star divided by P, which I've already written. So this is, um, right, just write it again, 1,079 divided by uh, 116 cakes that we can produce each day. And this production period is 9.3 days. And so if you think about this, we're producing for just uh, nine, and, nine, nine and a third day, nine days in, in four hours, essentially for, on a 12 hour day, 30%. And, and if there are 46 days uh, the cycle, so there's uh, 37 days where, uh, where we're just selling cakes and we're not uh, producing cakes. So there's 37 days available for other activities. Okay. The next few slides are just going to uh, summarize these, uh, this information that we've already computed, show you that, show you that again in a, in a much neater form. And so you'll have that available. And again, uh, again, the QMAX 865 cakes. So uh, that concludes the example. Next part of this lesson, we'll be talking about the quantity discount model. Again, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me.